Gluten Gardening, everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we're setting up our green stock vertical garden. And in addition to this, this is day number eight of our Guten Gardening gardening gift giving series. And so we're going to give away our eighth prize. And I got to tell you something, I'm really excited for this one. But let's go ahead and take a look at how we're setting up this green stock indoors. Because I know a lot of you had questions about that. And I really want to show you how versatile this setup can be and what we do to prep it for an entire indoor growing season. Now, in a recent video, I showed you how we sterilized and prepped this garden to come indoors because we've been growing in this particular green stock for two seasons outdoors. And again, I don't want to bring any kind of pest or disease indoors with it. So watch that video to see how we sterilized it. Today's video is going to focus more on setting it up, putting in our medium, our growing medium, and also making sure we can get it to work indoors because one of the things you have to remember about the green stalk is that when you water from the top, the water flows the whole way down through the bottom. And if you don't set it up correctly, you're going to end up with water everywhere. So I'm going to show you a really nice accessory that makes that not a problem whatsoever. For those of you who are brand new to green stalk vertical gardens, this is an original green stalk garden, which means it has five tiers and each of these tiers is 10 inches deep. And each of these 10 inch tiers takes about one cubic foot of growing medium. And that's gonna play a big role in what we're using this season for our indoor growing mix. So I'm gonna show you how we're creating that mix as well as we're setting this up and sort of the experimentation we're doing with it. Because right now, organic potting mix, and believe me, I've been looking everywhere, we found anywhere from eight to $10 per bag so if i filled this up with a store-bought organic mix that's like 50 dollars to fill it up now not saying that's the worst thing in the world but that's a lot of money and right now we're just going to use what we have to create a medium that's going to be well draining oh well, i'll show you what that looks like in just a minute i gotta disassemble this the rest of the way as we're gonna reassemble it in its completed form you can see the catch tray here where the water comes down from the top layers the top tiers and the little holes here that allow the water to feed into each tier below. And then any excess water flows down through these holes into the tier below that. So really there should be no time as long as your soil is not too dense where any of the water is going to pool up into this setup. Now, of course, if you look, each tier has those holes. So if I left this as the bottom, we'd have water flowing through all of these holes right into our grow tent. So let me show you what we put underneath. This is a mover base. This is what we're going to be putting underneath our green stalk right here. And it serves two really simple purposes. One, it blocks those holes and it comes with this plastic tube as well that goes right over this hole so that when the water's draining out, we have the ability to catch it as it's coming out. So that's one thing. The other thing that this catch tray brings to the table is mobility because once I add these wheels, which are lockable by the way, I have the ability to easily move this and spin it whenever I want to change the lighting situation, etc. So that's how we keep the water from running everywhere. Now let's go ahead and make a growing medium to put in here. Now, first I have to say that one of the things I love about sharing what I'm about to do is you can kind of see the thought process through this video that we're putting into what we're going to grow our plants in, in the green stalk. Because again, I do not want to pay 50 plus dollars to buy some organic potting mix. I want to use what we have on hand here. And so I've got some peat moss, I've got some cocoa cure, I've got some perlite, and I've got some worm castings. And that's going to be the baseline for the mix that we're building. Again, maybe not the ideal mix, the ideal ratio, but it's what we have on hand. And that means that I don't have to spend any additional money beyond what I've already paid for these over the past growing season. I should also point out that I'm gonna be doing the mixing in this little soil mixing tub. These are pretty inexpensive. I'll put a link to this in the description. <laughs> I gotta say, if you're looking to mix soil inside or really even outside, just some potting mix, check this out. All right, I went ahead and put a mask on because this stuff, this is peat moss. This stuff really goes everywhere, even if you're trying to be careful with it. You'll see the dust flying up and I don't want to get that up my nose, but I want to show you the different elements of what we're going to be mixing together. Here is some cocoa cure. This is our perlite. You've probably seen this if you bought plants from a nursery. You've seen that mixed into the soil. And we have 
some worm castings, the prettiest part of all. So this is what we're gonna make our growing media out of. I was serious about putting the mask on because there is all kinds of particulate matter in the air, no matter how careful I am. Now here's the deal for us. You will find different recipes online for what the ideal mix is for growing in a raised bed, for container gardening, etc. For us, our key is making sure we get a really well draining mix. Again, understanding that what we're gonna have is kind of a lean mix, meaning it's not going to have all that life in it because I can't use all the worm castings we have. You know, that's a pretty valuable commodity. Well, we're going to have to make sure we fertilize. We're gonna to have to make sure we water with some worm compost tea to really bring that life in there. But right now, our primary concern is a well draining potting mix. So let's take a quick close look at the texture of each of these ingredients. Our peat moss is a little bit bigger. The particles in here are a little bit bigger than the cocoa cure. You can actually see this is shaved coconut fiber and so it's all crushed down. These are smaller particles. And then our perlite really helps to create a less dense mix. Again, helping us with that water flow. And these are our worm castings which are pretty small particle matter, but they're still nice and fluffy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make our mix a little bit heavy in terms of ratio on the peat moss here. And we're still gonna add some of our cocoa cure. When we mix that together, we should get a pretty nice light fluffy mix. And then you add in this perlite, you know, maybe one part perlite to the other two thirds. We'll probably go a little less than a third of the cocoa cure. Again, this is stuff that we have already purchased, so we're not buying any more. And then once that's mixed together, we'll add in some of our worm castings, certainly not all of our worm castings, because that'll bring some immediate life to the soil. But I think a lot of the fertility in the soil is going to have to happen again through worm compost tea, through the natural fertilizers, the organic fertilizers that we're gonna use as well. But if you take a look at this mix right now, and I have to do this on a much bigger scale, but this is really light, which is really what we're looking for right now. Now, one thing I wanna make very, very clear about this process. This is the first time we're making the mix exactly like this. So a large part of what we have to do is to watch how the plants respond and then fertilize or add nutrients to it accordingly. Okay, so when we're looking at something like this, it would be better, in our opinion, it's easier, certainly less invasive, to add nutrients to a soil that's well draining than to go into something that is overly compact, doesn't drain very well, and try to amend that. Because when we talk about invasive, remember, soil, when we call it soil, it's filled with life. There are all kinds of organisms, there are all kinds of structures in place, and when you go in and you rip that structure apart, well, that's not good for the growing conditions of your soil. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people try out their no-till gardening. So, for us, I would much rather have a lean mix, one that I can go in and add my organic fertilizers, my liquid soluble fertilizers, my compost tea, I'd rather have that than to try to go in and amend a growing medium that is not well draining. That is the definition of an invasive procedure when it comes to gardening. So if I have to deal with a growing medium that's a little bit lean, I'll deal with it. And this, this looks about like what I want. All right, each tier takes about one cubic foot of mix. So what I'm gonna do is to try to mix about a cubic foot in this container each time. And I'm gonna fertilize each one of those tiers in here. I tell you what, if you can get your hands on a big bag of the perlite, that is a good objective. We usually pay about $16 for 1.5 cubic feet. That's not cheap. But again, it's something we already purchased earlier in the season. Boy, I tell you what, this mask is coming in handy. I'm gonna show you what this looks like once I've gone ahead and mixed everything together. And for now, I'm gonna add a handful of our worm castings into each tier and mix those in nicely. We got more worm castings where those came from. And I tell you what, if you didn't watch our video on a DIY for free, DIY worm bin set up a stackable worm farm, 
You should check that out. We just released that one. All right, I'm gonna interrupt this video very briefly to do our eighth giveaway of our 31 days of Guten Gardening, gardening gift giving. All right, folks, lots of people entered in for our eighth giveaway. Remember, there are gonna be 31 total. If you wanna be entered into the next one, leave a comment on this video or on one of our community posts on YouTube between now and the next video, and you'll be entered in to win. Now let's take a look at what today's giveaway is going to be. Now, today's prize goes back to a community post that we put together a short time ago where we asked what your favorite gardening book was, and we got lots of positive feedback. And so today's giveaway is a book. And this is not just any book. This is the all-new Square Foot Gardening book. You know, if you don't have a lot of space out there, a book like this that talks about growing in those smaller spaces in raised beds is the book for you. So let's go ahead and see who our winner for this Square Foot Gardening book is. One more thing before I click this button to show the winner, if you are located outside the US, make sure you leave that in the comment so we know. All right, let's go ahead and find out who today's giveaway winner is. Giveaway number eight, our winner is... Jason Flores. Hey, congratulations, Jason Flores. Wow, a regular commenter as well. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much for being a part of our community. Give congratulations to the winner, but don't say their name so that they can enjoy the surprise when they watch the video. And Jason, leave a comment on this video and we'll be in touch to get that prize out to you as soon as possible. All right, let's get back to our video. Now this is less than a cubic foot but we're gonna go ahead and get it fertilized because I wanna go ahead and add what we have already into our setup. Gotta give us a really good idea of how much more we need to add. Here's what we're gonna be adding though. We got our garden tone, that's our all-purpose baseline fertilizer. We've got some bone meal that we're gonna add for our pea. That's our phosphorus. We have our potassium in the form of langbionite, that's a 0022. And we have our mycorrhizal for a root development. And we have some of our azomite, which provides tons of trace minerals. So this is the starting point. And what I'm going to do, because again, I think this is a pretty lean mix. I'm going to look at the back, calculate, and add double what they recommend to get started here. And again, we can adjust this amount as we see our plants that we put in here start to respond. All right, I'm going to go ahead and mix this all up and add it to our first tier. All right, I'd say that's about half the amount. So that gives us a good measure. It's gonna take two of these per tier. Now I just have to repeat this process four more times. Well, folks, it took a little while to make the mix, but it's all in here. You see all that perlite in there? That's really gonna help us out, I think, with some good drainage. And even all filled with this mix, look at how easily this turns and spins because I've got this mover base at the bottom. I'm gonna say one more thing about making your own mix. If you've never done that before, when you make your own mix, you know exactly what's in it. And even though you can look at a bag of potting mix and see the percentages of things and see the ingredients, this is different because I know exactly what went into it. And so I can modify it, adjust it accordingly based on what I know is there. You know, in all likelihood, once we start planting in here, we'll see there may be a need for us to add more fertilizer, add a specific type of fertilizer, that's something we'll deal with as the season goes on. For now, I'm gonna leave you with this. This planter is ready to be planted, and so we're gonna have a video where we talk about exactly what we're planting in here this season. If you'd like to leave a suggestion for that, you can leave that in the comments below. Well, congratulations again to our winner number eight. We hope you really enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.